Connecting God's Word with our lives in the world. This is Tuesday's Touch from the Rev. Dr. Brian C. Henderson. Hey everybody, this is Pastor B and welcome to Tuesday's Touch. We've been looking at passages of scripture that tell the stories of what happened to the disciples after the resurrection of Jesus. And we've been doing that for two reasons. The first reason, of course, is because we need to know, right? It's in scripture. We need to know what's in scripture. But also because we are chronologically in and after Easter or after resurrection season. As you know, the last big uh, Christian holiday was uh, Easter. And so we are kind of in a post-Easter, post-Easter uh, time uh, as a world, as a, as a church. And so we've been looking at post-Easter passages. And I want to share with you uh, just one passage of scripture from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verse 15. It's a very familiar uh, passage of scripture, the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verse 15. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, feed my lambs. Now, the backstory is important. As some of you may know, Peter had on several occasions, more than once, betrayed Jesus. He wasn't there when Jesus was tried. He said he didn't know Jesus when they said you were with him on the night that Jesus was being tried. And and Peter had denied Jesus and Jesus knew he was going to deny him. Peter said, I'll never leave you. And Jesus said, you're going to deny me three times. And so that came to pass. And so whenever we. Uh, do things to hurt people like Jesus, like Peter did. He betrayed Jesus, denied Jesus. Whenever we do things that we know hurt people or betrayed a trust, we often feel at a distance between the one that we hurt. Right. We often feel like we can't look them in the eye. We feel like we can't talk to them and we sometimes avoid them. We don't answer the phone when they call and we find reasons to not to not engage them. And so that's kind of what many of us think was going on with Peter. And that's why this passage of scripture, uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 15, really all the way through verse 19, is often called the restoration of Peter because it's at this point when Jesus welcomed him back into the fold because they had not talked about it. And even though they had just eaten together, or even though they had just experienced a miracle with catching all those fish, They had not talked about the renewal of love that Peter had for Jesus. And, you know, like I do, when difficult things happen and you don't talk through them, they linger in the air. Right. And Jesus knew that because Peter felt some shame, Peter was not going to come to him. So Jesus goes to him and he says, Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, yeah. And then Jesus said, well, if you do feed my lambs. Very similar to the initial things that Jesus told them. He had already told them that they were going to be witnesses. He had already told them that they were going to go into the world. He had already kind of told them they were going to go out and, and, and do great things in several different ways. And it modeled that for, for the disciples. And now Jesus is saying, Peter, you're, you're back on the job. You're, we're done with that. And, and I think that it's important for us to realize that God is done with things when we are done with them. If we confess our sins, if we talk to God about what's going on and we share our pain, we share our regret and we reaffirm our love with God, God is done with stuff. God is done. We need to be like that with other people. Right. That's what we should be with other people. When other people come clean, we need to be done with that. We shouldn't keep punishing people presently for things they've done in the past. God was done with that. And so he wanted Peter to know, hey, you back on the job. You one of my disciples again. Go on and do the work of ministry. Do what you watched me do, what I've prepared you to do over the last three years. Feed my lambs if you love me. It's a reminder to us that, as in the words of Daryl Coley, the gospel writer, gospel songwriter, 
he's already forgotten what we can't forget. God, God's already forgotten what you and I can't forget. So a word to somebody, let it go. Confess it to God and let it go. And get on with the business, man. God has work to do and God has work for you to do. This is Pastor B. God bless you. God keep you. This is Tuesday's Touch. You have been touched.